Okay, thank you. It's a little after one o'clock, 1.02 p.m. I'm gonna call the Rural Initiatives and Planning Advisory Committee meeting to order. Uh, we have an agenda before us and I would uh, ask for any additions if there is any. Then I would seek a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved, Ed. Thank you, David. Seconder? Sally. Thank you, Sally. All in favor? Introduced by recorded vote, I assume. We have, we have to, in accordance with our procedural bylaw. Thank you. Uh, Warden Menel. Yes. Councillor Dominique Shiguer. Councillor Ed Ketchaba. Yes. Councillor Sally Martin. Yes. Heather Dirks. She's right online now. <laughs> uh, sorry, four to, to one, the motion's carried. Okay, thank you. Moving onward, we have the approval of the minutes uh, from our last meeting of May the 12th. Uh, any errors or omissions? Welcome, Heather. Hi, Heather. I would note that on the uh, copy of the uh, minutes that I've received that uh, it appears that uh, we didn't record Sally's vote on any of the uh, motions. Oh dear. Yeah, and I was present and voted on all of them. Yes. Yes, you've moved some of those and seconded some of those motions, so <laughs> not sure how you would uh, correct those minutes, but uh, so Mr. Chairman, I I suggest that uh, we correct the minutes and bring them back to your next committee meeting for approval. All right, that's I'm good with that. Uh, Let's move forward then. So let's move on then with the uh, Grant and Festival uh, Partnerships uh, Program Allocation for 2020. So would you walk us through that, uh, Julie? Uh, certainly, and with your consent, we have some, sorry, we have some feedback in our, our room. With your consent, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask to ask that Catherine Thompson deliver that report. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the committee. The report before you is uh, very similar to a report that you would have seen at your last meeting. Uh, it's simply an update of the status of applications that we've received to date. Uh, as you can see, several applications have since been withdrawn um, and there are several that still stand and are still requesting funds. So uh, still standing uh, is the Wallace Town Agricultural Society. Um, in the attachment, you can see that they had sent an updated email that they are still uh, looking for funds and still looking to do the, the improvements that they indicated in their first email. Um, additionally, the Elgin 4-H Association is also still looking for funds, as is the Elgin County Plowmen's Association and the STEAM Center. So all of that information uh, has stayed the same, aside from Wallace Town has uh, given us some, some supplemental information as to what they would like to do. Um, the uh, Rodney Alderborough Agricultural Society has uh, since withdrawn their application, um, and I, I believe it was uh, also in the minutes from the last meeting that the Shedden Agricultural Society has withdrawn their application as well. So the recommendations in the report are before you under the discussion section as to what the committee may wish to do, and I welcome any questions. Thank you for that report. So just a, a briefly overview that uh, there's been about uh, $12,200 in, uh, in uh, recommendations for funding. Uh, there's 23,000 and change left in the, uh, in the kitty, so to speak. So if we fund these as recommended, we're still going to have a little over $11,000 uh, remaining. Is that correct? I believe that the uh, the twelve thousand is actually included in the total, so we would have approximately twenty three remaining. 
Okay. We've already funded 26,000 though, have we not? Uh, yes, out of the 61,000. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. So what is the uh, wish of the committee? What would you like to do? Well, I have an issue with uh, most of the agricultural societies pulling their application and Wallace down staying in. Uh, I think we need to treat them all fairly and 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 the same. So I have an issue with Wallace down staying in for the seven thousand. I see that. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, they they came to us, I believe, uh, three years ago, looking at some capital improvements and got a special grant that year um, for it and where I think they were hoping we just keep it going. But uh, I, I would agree with Dave, if it's not for uh, programming, which is what we're supposed to be supporting, uh, I, I think it's probably inappropriate as well. Okay. Uh, Dominique, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I, I agree with what's been said. I only had a question about the uh, Plowman Association, did I read correctly that they're, they are going ahead with their event or they just have not canceled yet? Uh, as far as we've received information, uh, that's what we received, that they are going ahead. However, circumstances could change and they could end up needing to cancel. The event's usually held in September. I could just interject. I've been at the Plowman's every year, and there is usually sufficient room to to socially distance. Yes. Uh, very seldom you have uh, crowds of people coming in. Uh, certainly, there's judging on the of uh, the different uh, plowing events, but there's not like there's a lot of crowd of people. So I can understand why they they probably will go ahead with their event. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Yeah, obviously they can't go ahead though unless numbers change because they would certainly get, you know, I mean, I know that it's not crowded. It's a big space. I've been to it as well many times, but um, it just, I'm, I'm not certain that the prov provincial numbers will allow them to hold it at this time, but it may well change before it occurs. Correct. Okay. Heather, have you any comments that you'd like to add? <laughs> Just a question, and that is, I guess, because I maybe missed this in the beginning, what happens to the funds if they aren't allocated this year? That's a good question. Uh, my understanding is that they, they remain within this pool of funds for now, but I think that uh, goes back to a recommendation on this committee on how council wants to deal with those funds. That was my only question, thank you. All right, so, yep, David, you had something? Yeah, I would just suggest we leave in the $200 for the Plowman's Association, uh, regardless if they have their their uh, event or not, they would certainly use that in administration and, and advertising. So it's not, a, it's not like it's a big ticket item. Okay, fair enough. All right, so there seems to be some uh, agreement or consensus of withdrawing the uh, the $7,000 allocation to the Wallace Town uh, Agriculture Society. Uh, and some of these order, you know, requests uh, are not up to what they had asked. Is there any appetite uh, by the committee of either bumping any of these applicants uh, up or leaving them as, uh, as the committee had originally recommended? I'd be happy with leaving them as they are. Fair enough. I would as well. Okay. Yeah, I would as well. And just on the plowman, just to be absolutely fair, even though it's only $200, if the rationale for Wallace Town is that the event is canceled, if the plowing match is canceled, I think we have to withdraw. We can't allow them to use it for something else because I think we're gonna tell Wallace Town that um, they can't have their money if they don't hold the event. Yeah, good point. Fair enough. Is that something that you can accommodate administratively, Jim? Are we referring to just holding it and wait and, wait and see? Yeah. Yeah, that's not an issue. 
Well, it sounds like there's some consensus then on how to deal with the allocations uh, and recommendations going to county. Um, anyone willing to make a, a, a motion or to that effect? Mr. Chair, when we come back to the issue of uh, the remaining amount, then as a separate discussion item? I think so. Okay. So then I'm, I'm prepared to move that we go ahead with uh, the amounts requested. Okay. Except for those events that are not being held. Uh, absolutely. And since uh, Wallace Town would fall within that category because it's not being held, uh, it would. Yeah. All right. Anyone willing to second that? I'll second it. Thank you. Okay, have you uh, got a uh, motion kind of scripted out there, uh, Catherine? I do, um, and I may end up uh, wordsmithing this a little bit more afterwards, but uh, resolved that the committee recommends to County Council that the County Council fund $200 for the Plowman's Association contingent on the event going forward and that County Council deny the Wallace Town Agricultural Society's request for $7,000 and that County Council fund $2,000 for the 4-H Association and $3,000 for the STEAM Center. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so we have a mover and seconder. Dominic move, David second. Uh, We'll now call the question. Warden Dave Menel. Yes. Councillor Dominique Chiguer. Yes. Councillor Ed Ketchaba. Yes. Councillor Sally Martin. Yes. Heather Dirks. Yes. Okay, sure. Five to zero. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on with item four, and I think this is going to take a little bit of time would be the uh, presentation to gather feedback on uh, changes to the grant program. So are you going to lead that presentation, Catherine, or is that uh, Julie's? That will be Julie. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to committee members. Um, as the committee reworks the county's grant program, we feel it would be beneficial for our administrative work that has to happen uh, to support the program in, in the background to gather feedback in a number of key areas. So the following presentation um, and all supporting information will be included with the minutes of today's uh, agenda and will be used as a checklist as we go to help guide the discussion and gather your feedback. So that will include a number of key areas, including um, program areas, eligibility, important criteria, application review process, including program specific handbooks, um, promotion of the community grant program, reporting and accountability um, glossary, and whether there's any items missing from the definitions, and next steps, staff direction, and some uh, feedback from the committee on expectations surrounding council reporting. So County Council and the County of Elgin recognizes the valuable contributions made by many community organizations and volunteer groups to improve the well-being of the community and quality of life for its residents. To ensure grants are, um, are handled in a transparent and accountable fashion, uh, the Rural Initiatives and Planning Advisory Committee is undertaking a fulsome review of the process by which we distribute grants in Elgin County. The committee will focus on ensuring the grant programs are reviewed for enhanced transparency and accountability, clearly defined eligibility and ineligibility for all grant programs, promotional plan to ensure there is equitable access for funding for all community organization, uh, the guiding principles that we will use to apply to all grant programs and ensure alignment with County Council's strategic plan, we want to ensure there's ease of use for all applicants and uh, suitability of application process, timelines, and required reporting. So we're hoping to um, go through each of those items today and um, 
gather your information to ensure that the planning work and reporting work that we're doing to support the work of the committee is meeting your expectations. So the community grant program supports council strategic plan in two priority areas, serving Elgin, which um, the objective is to redesign how we respond to community need in a creative and sustainable way and includes exploring different ways of addressing community need and engaging with our community and other stakeholders. As well, the strategic priority of growing Elgin to be the place where people want to live, work, and play. And this includes enhancing quality of place. So the community grant program, um, it, it involves a council commitment of a modest uh, budget of just shy of $70,000, so $61,000 um, or roughly $3 per, is it $3 per county resident, Jim? Yes, it's uh, three seventeen. Three seventeen. dollars great, thank you. Uh, support is provided through the county's operating budget to qualifying organizations through an annual application process. And each year, uh, over the past several years at least, we have received more grant requests than we're able to fund, which is why having a, a review process and clearly defined scoring matrix and um, key workflow is imperative when considering grants to ensure that funds are being allocated in a fair and transparent manner. The aim of the program is to share available resources throughout the county and grants are intended to provide modest levels of support and assistance to community nonprofit organizations. So before we move on, is there any committee feedback? That, that must be $3 per household, not per capita, right? Yes, it is per household, your, your worship. Okay. So Julie, of course, it, this is a, a an overview of how the current grant uh, or the principles behind the grant system as it is now, correct? Yes, those would be the guiding principles that um, reflect council's priorities and um, reflect the reasons why they would invest in a county grant program. So alignment with strategic plan, um, providing modest assistance to nonprofits and in general support of um, community events and special programs. So then I don't think oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna say I don't think we had any problem with why we do it. I think it was the, the judging criteria that most of us were concerned about. Yes. Um, but those guiding principles link directly to the scoring um, that you undertake. So um, for for our work and behind the scenes, it was important to just check in in all areas related to the grant program, and that will inform um, the handbooks and, and associated policy work that is required before we uh, bring forward a revised grant program to County Council. Uh, so we created a bit of a checklist for the committee, and I encourage committee members with your consent, Mr. Chairman, to jump in at any time, and if anything, doesn't sound right or seems contradictory to other information that we've included or um, contrary to what you uh, think should be included in the grant program, please do speak up as we bring it up. Um, I, I wouldn't wanna miss anyone's feedback. Perfect, so thank the, you. Um, the applicants must be nonprofit community groups and organizations whose primary focus is within the county. Organizations must limit their applications to one application per stream per year. One, one question on the first one, Julie, and that was, I was thinking of the seniors picnic, yes. which services both 60% county and 40% city, um, at least according to the statistics that they gave us. It, <sighs> There were a couple of places. One, it says it must take place in the county of Elgin. I'm assuming that does not include St. Thomas. So that's why I'm asking. Yes, and I did make a, a special note as we consider that, that item specific to the seniors picnic because it is located 
in the uh, within city limits at Pinafore Park. So uh, if there is a preference to to make a, an amendment there, we'd be happy to revise it. I think if it serves the you know if it serves a lot of our people, um, and it seems to be a very popular one plus. You know, it, it doesn't ask for a lot of funds, but I think it's been an excellent event and serves a lot of our people. So I would hate to see our criteria such that they can't apply anymore. Julie, I'm wondering if the wording that you've got there that suggests that the primary focus is within the county gives enough leeway that uh, ultimately council can choose to support that particular initiative. Yeah. I think uh, I think you're right, Mr. Chairman. I agree. Just take out the other part later that says it must be take place in the county. Yes, great. Well, we also have to be cautious. We don't want a whole bunch of organizations within the city now being eligible. Yep. No, they have to prove. I think they have to prove that it it services the county residents. And what they did with the seniors picnic is half the money was paid by St. Thomas and half by the County of Elgin, even though we actually had more than half the people being served. So that's where, you know, I, I, I think under submitting statistics, et cetera, they would have to show that it's definitely serving, uh, for our share, it's definitely serving the people of Elgin County. Can I ask you a question? Eat to learn program not supporting schools inside the city. I would assume you're right. But they also serve schools within the rural structure too, do they not? They do, yeah. They do. Just a question there. Yep. And uh, I would think that uh, regardless of what policy uh, the committee is going to recommend and which the uh, council does ultimately adopt, but uh, I would assume that council would have the authority to usurp its own policy uh, at any particular time on a for a specific or special reason. So I, I'm not too worried about the uh, the parameters, but I think the primary focus is absolutely correct. It should be within the county. Great. So we have flagged that, and we'll um, we'll rework it and bring back. Uh, We'll bring back some new information for that piece if it is uh, still not clear. Uh, as well, we'll we'll take special note, Councillor Martin, of the uh, location piece, which is coming up shortly. Uh, so the grant shall not be considered as a primary source of funding, and the organization must show exploration of other financial and in-kind support. Funding shall be for future initiatives. Retroactive funding will not be considered. Evidence of responsiveness to community need must be outlined. Equity and accessibility to participants must be demonstrated. And funding is only for the fiscal year in which the organization has applied. Any feedback before we move on? No, I'm good. Great. I think it looks pretty good, yep. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, just that, that very last point. Um, so the fiscal year, the, so the applications will come in in December. Is that, did I read that correctly somewhere? November, December? Yes. I believe you're right, but I think, uh, for example, they would be looking for the forward year's uh, opportunity. So, for example, the applications coming in for 2021 would be due November, December. I believe it's November, I thought, and uh, but uh, the funding is only for the 2021 year. Is, am I getting that correct, uh, Julie? That is correct, and I agree that that um, sentence doesn't reflect really what we were intending, which is um, it, it should be for the fiscal year in which the program or service will be held. And so it is the successive year. It is the year after they've applied, but we'll clear that one up. We flagged it. Thank you. Great, so the next item is funding is not to be regarded as a commitment by the county to continue such assistance in future years. Mm -hmm. 
Repeat grants will only be considered for organizations who have complied with the reporting requirements of any previous grants. And this is particularly important if we were to eliminate the 10% holdback, which I believe was um, the chairman noted was the feedback from the council from the committee moving forward was uh, we should eliminate that holdback. So um, we wouldn't issue money in the future to anyone who hadn't submitted a final report. Funding requests may be reduced in value at the discretion of the committee and county council to support a wider range of initiatives. Um, so there is an option here to say funding requests may be reduced or enhanced at the value at the discretion of the committee and county council. Is there any interest in uh, making any amendments to this piece? wouldn't mind seeing it go to enhance as well. Um, thinking particularly of the 4-H right now, if um, there was surplus money and that was the wording that they had applied under at this time, now we could probably bump theirs up, but I don't think it was in the terms at that time. Right. I don't think there's any harm uh, with including the words enhanced. Uh, for example, requests may be reduced and or enhanced, you know, at the discretion. I can't imagine there'll be many circumstances where we'll enhance it, but you never know. Right. That's great. I believe we did enhance the E to learn though, correct? We did. At the request, you're absolutely right from the original allocation. Great. Uh, so grants may be awarded with certain terms and conditions. The letter of award will state if any particular restrictions apply to the grant. Final report submitted by the applicant will be made publicly available on the county's website and will be submitted to Elgin County Council. The county is not obligated to allocate funds to any organization, regardless of the fact that they satisfy the eligibility requirements and meet all of the objectives in the policy. Grant applications determined to be ineligible for funding or denied funding in any given year shall be notified in writing. Any Oops. Sorry. Say, these are the general principles then under which, uh, you know, the pillars of which the grant funding program will operate. Julie, is there something in there, whether the committee is willing to entertain a notion or not, is there something in there that might uh, speak or include language to encouraging new initiatives? Nope, that's excellent feedback. Um, and I think just be, yeah. yeah, I'm just just trying to say rather than just uh, funding the same old uh, programs over and over again, uh, and maybe this should be brought up later, but uh, during the scoring matrix or something that some weighting program would be given or preference be given to a, a new or innovative uh, ideas coming forward rather than. Uh, continually funding the same old thing. Yeah, that's excellent feedback. And um, for our community improvement program, we actually assign bonus points to first time applicants. Right. So, um, so we've made note that new initiative and first time applicants uh, should be included in the overarching principles for the grant program. And um, that will then tie, tie it into the, um, the scoring matrices. What do you think, Dominique? Yeah, to that, end, Mr. Chair, I, I may suggest a, a slightly different approach. I don't know if later in the presentation, um, Julie, you will talk about the different streams that you're thinking. I think that's four streams. So I think that might be a way of integrating that concept of newness and evolution and growth into the streams, uh, perhaps. So it will affect the criteria and the matrix, but um, perhaps differently. So I'm, I'm just should we, is, will that come up later on, Julie, in terms of the revisions of the streams? Definitely, yes. I'll, I'll bring that up at that point. Um, so any other feedback on that slide before we move on? That's great. Um, next is any unused grant funds at the end of the year will be carried over to the next year. So this is good. 
Okay, I'm going to speak to that one, and I may be the unpopular one in the room, but uh, uh, if if for some reason there are unallocated funds uh, at the end of, of the year, why would we reserve them into this particular program? Why not uh, put it back into uh, general county revenue because you're going to allocate a brand new budget for the next year anyway? And it's indexed, correct, Jim? Like it's 317 now and it's going to be indexed, so it'll be a little more next time. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, like, if we couldn't allocate it this year, what makes you think we're going to allocate it next year? And it's indexed in two ways. One is by inflation. The other is by household growth. So right. as more households, then it, it gets larger as well. True. So it's growing anyway. The budget will be growing. Yeah. That's just my thoughts. I'm just thinking just uh, rather than keeping it carried over for year after year, why don't you return it back to the general revenues and start over with each fiscal period with a, with a new budget? I'm wondering. Go ahead, Sally. That that's fine with me. Uh, my thought: we we've never before not allocated all the funds and had them used. This has been an unusual year, so I doubt that we're going to run into it much anyway. But it would be fine with me. Okay. One suggestion, Mr. Chair, would be to uh, reopen applications at a let's say we hit April. And for whatever reason, we have we still have funds remaining um, to relaunch uh, the call yeah. for the remainder of the year. You never know, especially if we're trying to encourage new organizations or new initiatives. And then plan C, if at the end of the year, I would agree if there's anything remaining that should go back in the main budget, I would not carry over. I think I was thinking along your line of thinking too, Dominique. It was uh, occurring to me that if we come to November and we've got a pool of money still sitting in this uh, program, why would we uh, complicate things and and uh, add it into next year's? But that's just my thinking. I like uh, the idea of Dominic that if there is money available, we put out uh, you know feelers for new projects. Because some people, if it's a new project, they may not know a year ahead that they're going to be doing. It. Yeah. What do you think, Mr. Warden? I'm fine with you. You've got two two subjects really. One, if you get a surplus, what you do with the surplus, and I'm I'm in favor of putting it back into our regular account. Right. And as far as opening up at, at the, that gets a little complicated in in August if opening opening it back up to individuals to to uh, apply um i think it's a little complicated a little bur burdensome really i think you're right i think if you're going to open it back up it's got to be fairly early in the year <clears throat> heather have you got any thoughts um just to, for my own clarity um earlier i had asked what happens with the funds if we don't allocate them this year and what we're talking about right now would apply to years after this is that correct correct yeah, your surplus will still roll back into this fund. Well, we have to have that discussion. I kind of messed up and uh, forgot that discussion, but we're going to have it before we close out today. Okay, I'll wait then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's uh, really helpful feedback. We've noted that any unused grant funds will not be carried over as well. We'll include a uh, provision that contemplates a, a second intake, um, perhaps some general language that would allow the committee the flexibility in order to undertake a second intake if um, if time and funds permit. So we'll include that moving forward. Applicants can only apply for up to 50% of the project, service or event expense up to a maximum of $10,000 for community events and programs. And I've made a note under no circumstance will a grant exceed 50% of the eligible costs of the program or event. And committee members who received a, a copy of this in advance, you'll note that I had um, conflicting information and in one section I'd included 30%, in another section I'd included 50% and that's because I, I waffled a bit myself. So, um, 50% is, is what we would fund through the, the community improvement project. And really this percentage of 
the project that the grant program would support is at the discretion of the committee to recommend to council. So we'd be happy to make amendments according to your preference. Well, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, currently, uh, you've had applicants that have applied for more than ten thousand dollars. But uh, if the committee is comfortable with capping at ten, that's fine with me. It might actually spread the program out further. I like the idea of capping it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would support that perhaps more so than a percentage. Yeah. I'm good with the cap. So a, ma a maximum of $10,000, but uh, is, is the grant program, can it fund up to 50% or is would you like that removed? I think it could fund up to 50% as long as it doesn't exceed that amount. Yeah, I would agree. I'm good. I'll catch you, bud. If I may. Yeah. Yes. Um. The uh, just to make everyone aware, we've granted second stage housing thirteen thousand four hundred this year, so it would be a a reduction for them. Yes, it would. I was just looking that over. The ask was twenty thousand, but it was thirteen thousand that were allocated. Uh, likewise, there was another steam that asked for 13,000. We didn't allocate that. If I read that correctly. And is the 10,000 uh, fixed or would that be indexed as well? Good question. I think, should be, I think it should be indexed because certainly costs go up and everything else, taxes, you know, it should be indexed or at least increased by Every, like, say, every so many years by a certain amount, if you don't want uneven numbers. I would assume that this uh, policy and program would be reviewed fairly frequently. Uh, rather than complicating it, would we just uh, increase the, uh, the cap at some future date? Would that be easier, Sally? Yeah, that, that's fine. I was just thinking because that way we'd end up with a set amount rather than you know, $10,228 or something. Agreed. Great, so we've made note of that. Um, the next slide, um, we start to talk about eligibility and this is where we really need um, some direction from the committee. So applicants we're hoping are incorporated not-for-profit organizations or organizations with a charitable number, or community associations, or unincorporated groups with not-for-profit goals and a governance structure, and funded activities and services must take place within the County of Elgin. And so this, I think, could be eliminated altogether based on Councillor Martin's feedback. And just a general note that, again, eligibility criteria um, if someone meets that, it doesn't guarantee that they will receive funding through this program. So are we missing anything in terms of eligible um, associations or groups, or have we excluded anyone that um, by making this too restrictive? Joe, well, you're talking you about, I think you encompass everybody with the first four of the criteria. Great. So the next one is ineligible organizations and ineligible activities. So for profit organizations and ventures will not be able to submit applications. Religious activities. Religious organizations with a note funding requests from religious organizations and funding bodies must demonstrate clear boundaries between its religious and fundraising content and public programming and both program details and budgets as part of their application. Uh, political parties are excluded. Hospitals, foundations, sports teams, programs or events that promote the County of Elgin. Organizations whose activities are deemed to come under the jurisdiction of other levels, divisions, departments, agencies of the county or other governments, school boards, post-secondary institutions, County funded social services organizations, hospitals, business improvement associations, 
So, I didn't want to make this too restrictive, uh, given that we had an application from our partner municipality. So, we have to give some special consideration to how we would consider those requests going forward and whether as part of the new or revamped program, they would be eligible to apply. Fundraising activities and activities that take place outside of the County of Elgin, again, that's repetitive, we can take that out because we have the overarching principle that um, as long as they um, reach a number of county residents and, and they're um, in support of the County of Elgin, I think we would leave that in. So it would be helpful to know um, the committee's preference with respect to the applications from partner municipalities. And is it a way of building in eligibility for them or do we leave them on the ineligible list? We're, we're not looking at the municipalities, just organizations within partner, like neighboring municipalities. So, like the group there in Chilsenburg that we have supported. Is that correct? Um, which group in Chilsenburg? <laughs> Medivy. Or not Medivy. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Quad County. Oh, Quad County. Yeah. So, so, they would still be eligible because they don't receive government funding um, and aren't an agency of the county or other governments. So the, the note here is other governments and the West Elgin renaming committee, I believe, and I may be incorrect here, uh, but if memory serves me correctly, they were a committee of West Elgin council. So, so including this provision would make them ineligible to apply for future applications. I, I found their application didn't seem to fit the community grants program to start with, but that was just me. If I could speak as a chair of a small nonprofit, I don't think it's really fair myself if a, if a disability can apply. I guess I didn't quite get that, Heather. Um, uh, neither did I, yeah. So I have a small nonprofit that I run. We run the Hope Starts Junior Gardeners program, not this year. Um, I'm a nonprofit that is incorporated. And I would just say, we've never applied for this grant because we didn't know about it. And if a municipality knows about it because they may be copied on the communications coming down from the county or possibly have a rep sitting on this committee that they knows they knew about this grant, then um, I don't really think it's fair that they would be able to apply for funding through this particular grant if they already have their own budget. Um, I just think that, you know, it's not really the purpose of the grant to support, that's my thoughts on it. Okay. So Alan Smith, are you on the line? Yes. Um, if I could just... Sorry, can you just specifically speak to um, the grant and festival program in the past and how you would assign based on um, impact? Uh, yes, two things for impact. We would undertake uh, an economic uh, impact analysis of each event, um, depending on staffing levels and um, uh, cooperation from the um, event organizers. But we try to determine a the economic impact of each event, and we do that through surveying um, at the event, and then do an analysis. Uh, using an economic impact model uh, through the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. So we did that in the very beginning. We got away from it. Then we did it again last year. Um, it's quite time consuming, but it does give an idea of the return one gets from one from the investment the county that does put into the to the event. So uh, that's how we measure that impact. And 
I would also like to say regarding the comment regarding partner municipalities, for when through the Festival Events Partnership Program in the past, we have entertained uh, applications from our local municipal partners, for example, Canada, Canada, Canada Day celebrations, uh, things like that. So we have entertained um, municipal partner uh, applications uh, in the past. So is it the county's or the committee's preference to leave um, other governments within this provision and then um, council can debate it further? I, I think I would leave it in so that it will make future adjudication um, more straightforward and clear. Great. Thank you. Any other comments on that slide? Programs or events that promote the County of Elgin. Uh, I don't know if I would use that as uh, something to disclude uh, participation. After all, if you're going to invest, you'd like to have a little recognition, would you not? I'm not saying that's the primary purpose why uh, you do a grant program, but. Um, Certainly, happy to remove that one. And then, uh, as you said, or uh, you know, the final one, activities that take place outside the county of Elgin. Yeah, you can remove that one, but I still think it's uh, the kind of programming that uh, you want to offer that's going to benefit the residents of Elgin. Mm -hmm. So there may be some regional activities or something that comes up that uh, is going to be a real boon to our residents that uh, we shouldn't preclude from participating just because it's not held within the borders. Absolutely, we've made note of all of those changes. Any other feedback? Great. So the next slide is ineligible expenses. Uh, so we've we've noted capital projects, and then I've made a special note about uh, the pavilion that the committee funded last year. So if we included this as an in ineligible expense, then in future we wouldn't be able to fund such projects as the pavilion. Um, deficit reduction. Oops. Sorry. Julie, just a, just a point. When we did the original um, capital grant, we took it out of this program and just did it as a separate entity um, because we felt that a capital grant shouldn't be involved in this program. So when I was on council initially and we approved helping them with that pavilion, it was not considered part of this grant process. It was a separate uh, in grant that we gave them for that year. And I know they've come back since and asked for it under this. Okay, that provides clarity, thanks. Uh, retroactive activities, programs or events will be ineligible, HST. And again, we'll rework this programming outside of Elgin County to, uh, to support the, the feedback received um, earlier today. Any other comments about ineligible expenses? Great, we'll move on to some other criteria. Um, again, we reinforced the 50% of the total program budget under the first uh, box there. Applicants with outstanding final reports are again ineligible for subsequent funding. Late applications will not be accepted. So I just wanted to confirm this with the committee because there are two ways of handling this. One is the deadline has approached. Um, we have someone who comes in a couple hours late. How flexible does the committee want to be? I, I think you have to have a deadline. We, it, it just opens a can of worms. Great. And if somebody can't get in on the deadline, then they're, they're not being very efficient. Great. Um, so the next one is important to me that funding applications cannot be submitted or signed by County of Elgin employees or Elgin County councillors. Um, all applicants are strongly encouraged to contact staff prior to submitting an application to discuss their program details. Um, does the committee feel this is a necessary step? I don't think it's necessary, but I think it would be prudent. Great. 
I don't think it's necessary either. You, I would be tempted to put, uh, yeah, you said strongly encouraged, which is fine. Great. I, I don't even know if I would go as far as strongly encouraged because it, it almost sounds like something could happen if, you're, if you don't. Um, and I, I think we want to make this program so clear and accessible that, in fact, speaking to staff may not be necessary. So perhaps just saying staff is available for, you know, inquiries and support, um, but not signaling that maybe it's in your best interest to contact us because that could be misleading. Yeah, I would, I would encourage all applicants may contact staff to submit of the application to discuss their programs. Great, thanks for that feedback. Is there anything that we've we've missed? Any other items you'd like clarified on this slide? Okay. Great. Um, so then the exclusions, just to circle back, individuals cannot apply, businesses, publicly funded institutions, um, We've had the discussion about local municipal partners, so that question is covered. Consideration will not be given to requests for grants for recreational sports groups, nor will the committee um, allocate funds used for sponsoring individual athletes or teams for a competition or to subsidize participation in a sports event. Any other feedback? I'm good. Great. Uh, so the committee would be seeking applications that support innovative initiatives and services that provide both direct and indirect benefits to county residents. And through the application process, we would be asking applicants how they would provide these benefits. Mm -hmm. um, we don't provide funding for operating expenses of an organization. All applicants will be required to complete and submit an, submit an application with clear and sufficient information and will draft a template. Uh, the committee may, in its sole discretion, schedule a meeting with an organization to discuss matters related to the submitted application, as you have done in the past. So is this something the committee still wants to build in to the future program? It provides the option and flexibility if you need to get some more clarity from an applicant. Yes. Great. And, oops. There. sorry, Heather? There is a typo there. It should be it's. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Just letting you know. <laughs> it's probably not going to be the last, Heather. <laughs> um, submission of an application does not guarantee that the organization will get all or part of the re grant request. Of all of the grant material that I have reviewed, that, that piece is really reinforced and bolded in many other uh, municipal grant processes. So I think um, that's why it may seem repetitive here. We'll, we'll clean it all up and clarify moving forward. Any feedback on the application slide? So the review process at a high level, Elgin County assigned the review of grant applications to the Rural Initiatives and Planning Advisory Committee, who then makes the recommendations to County Council. And the community grant program submissions are reviewed by committee members using scoring matrices designed for each stream of the program. Are you comfortable with the review process? Uh, so the application period and important dates proposed timelines is, um, so I, I created this timeline based on um, the assumption that say in any given year you had $25,000 of extra grant applications and you felt very strongly about approving those grants and wanted to bring forward an additional budget request, um, this would give you that opportunity. And as well, it would give council um, the opportunity to make a change to their per household allocation 
and perhaps um, change their grant po policy slightly in order to accommodate certain exceptions. Um, they are fairly aggressive timelines and um, open to any feedback. Um, so September 1st, the submission period would open and all of the uh, um, available materials for this year would be published on our website and promoted by social media and other means. Um, but that would be what we target for this fall. And then September to October, we're proposing having a public information session or more than one public information session, which could be virtual. People could log in and learn more about the grant process. Um, November 10th would be the application deadline. And that would give us a month to prepare the report and gather the information for the committee, have a committee meeting, and uh, the final report would come to County Council in advance of budget deliberations. Mm -hmm. Then the budget process, as we know, takes until March, give or take, and so that might be March or April of 2021, and funding notifications would be made following Council's direction and approval of the budget and approval of the committee's recommendations. And at that point, unsuccessful applicants would be notified. And then November 1st of the following year, final submission for, for the reports using a template that we would design. Um, that's the due date for, for that. So I'm not sure whether this um, achieves the committee's priorities or whether the, you'd like to see any changes here, but we, we'd be happy to gather feedback here. Okay. Um Julie, the November 1st, 2021 uh, final submission date, is that for the 2020 application year or the 2021 funding agreement? 2020. So that's a full year behind. So they have to file their agreements or file their reports a full year behind? No, you're absolutely right. It is for the 2021 and it wouldn't be for, for a complete year at that point. Okay, well, that, that's what I'm kind of curious about. Um, but the committee would need that information in order to achieve these timelines. Yeah. Um, because if you don't have a, a funding agreement or a final submission, then it makes them ineligible. That's that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Or it was a whole year lag behind. So how do you move forward? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's thank you. It's a good catch. Any other feedback about the application period? Okay. Um, so intakes. So those timelines that we just reviewed, would those work for all different funding streams, including the emerging needs and program innovation um, type of subcategory? Um, or if we just built in some generic language about um, giving the committee the flexibility to have multiple intakes throughout the year, will that suffice? Well, I'm thinking it's going to get awfully confusing uh, with multiple intakes across the year. Um, if you have a budget uh, you know, surplus at the end of, say, April, May, and you want to go back out uh, to the marketplace again, you could. But um, for emerging needs and program innovation, you know, you just don't plan these things in January and uh, come up with an application in February. It seems to me you're a few months out doing this anyway. So if they miss the stream this year, they'll be able to get to it next year and mm -hmm. still be emerging and innovative. It's just my thoughts. My only concern. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Chair. We had we had talked about um, allowing or reserving some funds for emergent ideas, um, and when we talk about different streams, like what I'm suggesting is that in fact we have two streams, uh, a seed stream and a grow stream, and that we reserve some funds in the seed stream that could apply at any time, and whereby. 
on the other hand, the green screen uh, would def would be the one following this specific timeline. Yeah, it would. Okay. Heather, you got right. your hand up. Just a uh, thought. What if what if the the wording said something like additional intakes may be considered if plus exists in a calendar year or a fiscal year? I was thinking the same that we'd set a deadline additional funds or additional applications may be um, submitted uh, by such and such, you know, a date in say May or April or whatever, if there are still funds available. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've noted that. Um, any other feedback about intakes? So we are saying perhaps when we discuss the streams, uh, we can come back then to intake. That would it perhaps influence the, um, the wording here. Certainly. And I, I do just, I should just um, make note of having multiple intakes across all of the different categories. Uh, should the committee contemplate multiple categories? Uh, I could be a challenge for uh, staff to keep up. So it would be helpful to have some defined intake periods. And um, certainly we would address any resourcing challenges with the committee if we were contemplating additional intakes um, over and above kind of the, um, the guidelines that we're hoping to develop today. Um, so, as uh, Councillor Jaguer noted, it's probably a, a discussion that's uh, that will be ongoing as we contemplate the, the different categories. So appreciate your feedback there. Uh, reporting and accountability. All organizations have to submit a report, which we want to note and reinforce that this will be a public document and it will, uh, it will be a template that we seek the committee's um, consent to, to utilize so that we're getting kind of standardized information from each of the recipients. And here um, we've noted the 10% holdback. Um, any organization that does not submit a report will not be considered for funding in the future and the 10% holdback will not be released. So here are the two key questions. Is there a need for a 10% holdback? And what is the risk associated with eliminating the holdback? So for some organizations, um, like the, the $200 grant recommendation that you'll be making to county council, the, the administrative costs of holding back that 10% are great, greater than what we're holding back, I would suggest. So. Is there really a need for the 10% holdback or is it incentive enough or disincentive enough to um, require that report? And if we don't receive the report, then it makes them ineligible for future funding. What are your thoughts there? I think if you that the 10% is a bit of a nuisance and I think if they're ineligible the following year, that should be enough incentive to make sure they have a report. I agree. Now, should we should we establish um, for how long those organizations are ineligible? Will they submit the report? Going back, so so if a new if a organization changed leadership five years later, could they are they still ineligible? I suppose you got a point there. Uh, they'd almost be just yeah. You have to uh, determine whether it's the same organization or not. Yeah. Yeah, you got a point. But in terms of risk to the county, I mean, if you have a $10,000 cap, $10,000 risk. I have a question on the first point. Yep. The reports are presented to county council, but are they presented back to this committee? For sure. So that that's um, what this committee would do with that information is this committee would receive all of the final reports and submit it to county council as part of their year end report. So perhaps that needs to be clarified. OK, 
Great, so we'll, we'll eliminate the 10% hold back and uh, put, clarify the year end report um, with the first bullet. Can I make one more suggestion on this slide? The programs that do uh, part of their work in the county and part in the city, is it possible for them to signify in their report how much was done in the county and how much was done in the city? The eat to learn, and I'm genuinely curious to know how much of their funding goes to schools in the county and how much goes to schools in the city. Certainly. Uh, so we've made, we've made note of that, and um, as we come up with the scoring matrices to to match the individual programs and the final report template. And even the application template will will ensure that we cover off that direct impact to uh, county residents. Perhaps just to go back on that, uh, when would you be eligible again? Um, I do think that it would be reasonable to expect some sort of report, even if the leadership has changed over. I think it would the onus would be on the new board to find out what happened to that money and do their proper uh, due diligence uh, and provide some sort of report. It may be incomplete, it may, but I, I think it would provide some goodwill uh, and, and not just write it out and I'll just, because it will be, I cannot think of a year or a number of years that would not be arbitrary otherwise. So, I, I mean, the reason we hold back is because we want to see that the funds were used well. We want to show transparency. So what happened? Why was not the, why was the report not submitted and include some sort of lessons learned and, and moving forward? So I, I think rather than trying to pick an arbitrary year, let's just um, submit a report. That's great. So we'll include that. Um, they're ineligible until a final support report is submitted. And I think that covers off any uh, any timeline concerns. Excellent feedback. Anything else for re reporting and accountability? Okay, so application process. So we were hoping to to have um, a similar process for all program areas, and those would have a general set of guiding principles that we talked about earlier general eligibility criteria, um, application process would be similar, and then a specific set of guidelines would be created for each of the specific substreams, and a specific mini handbook would be developed for each of those funding streams. And that would include the additional eligibility criteria, eligible expenses, if, if there was anything different from the guiding principles, um, different timelines, different intakes, if there was such. Um, and then there will be different scoring matrices used for each of the programs. Uh, applicants can apply online or by providing a hard copy paper submission. Um, the application material will be available online, but could also be um, mailed out to applicants and um, I don't know whether we'll provide, um, we'll advertise using our local municipal partners to help disseminate information, but we'll use social media website um, and at the committee's discretion, we could even advertise in the paper. Uh, draft application uh, was included in the uh, material I sent out over the weekend. My only concern was, are we making it too onerous for the applicant? And we did clarify that funding shall not exceed 50% of the total program budget. And program budget and financial reporting was also submitted as part of the discussion guide. And is that the level of transparency the committee would like to see? And is that getting us closer to, um, to being able to match up the applicants with 
the committee's guiding principles and council's strategic plan. And when I was um, drafting up the, the financial piece, I wondered how will the committee handle organizations' submissions when their fiscal year is March to March? And should we make special note of that? So any thoughts for any of these bullets? I think we need to be flexible because some uh, organizations do have a March to March uh, calendar year. Not everybody ends at December 31st. So I think we need to be a little flexible. I would agree with that one. And I would think that uh, the most recent financials uh, should be sufficient. Great. Great, any other feedback about the application process? That's great. So the adjudication process and applicant scoring uh, so staff would compile all the information and submit it to the Rural Initiatives and Planning Advisory Committee, who would then submit it to County Council. Um, so staff review would include an assessment of each application for completeness and eligibility. And my key question for the committee is, would you like staff to follow up at that point for additional information? So if we received an application and, and determined that someone was missing a, a budget document or their template um, templated response to the application process wasn't included, would you like us to follow up or bring that information to the committee? This would be previous to the, uh, the deadline you're talking about, uh, Julie? This would be following the deadline. So from the following period the deadline. of... From November 1st to that December 10th period. So we would we would have, let's say, 12 to 15 applications. And we go through and like we do with our RFPs and tenders, we'd have a checklist making sure that they're complete and that they meet the eligibility uh, criteria. And so if they're incomplete, do we follow up and get whatever information we can after the fact and before we submit it to the count the committee it's an interesting question because how do you you know do the, would the application be considered complete once it's uh the deadline is passed and if that's the case then you wouldn't bother or do you want to assist the uh the applicants out there and provide a little bit of leeway after the fact if they've mistakenly left a, a piece of paper behind we're talking about volunteers for most sakes question would be around their final reports. Is that something that can be included if it's going to prevent eligibility? If they didn't submit a final report last time, is it possible for staff to let them know that that is what's missing and then have them submit it in time before it goes to the December 10th review by this committee? We could, we could certainly do as the, the committee wishes. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It would be almost like um, giving them a second deadline that if, there, if something was omitted. So I would agree with staff doing the follow up in advance of the committee meeting. And uh, it is kind of giving them a chance. And I agree they are most, for the most part, volunteer boards and um, yeah, so, but then that would be the last chance. So here's your last chance. You must send us this, these additional documents by December 1st and that's it then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So great. Uh, so once we had a review um, to make sure that the applications were complete, we would then forward the financial information to our financial services department for a, a quick analysis. And then we would bring um, we would send all of the application materials as well as our financial anal analysis and our, um, our checklist for eligibility and completeness to all committee members. And then you would do individual scoring and then you would meet and review the team 
um, the team scoring. So uh, we would take your individual scores and put them into a scoring matrix as we did um, for this most previous round of review. And the committee members would then discuss the allocations. And I established a passing score of 60. And that score doesn't guarantee a recommendation of funding, but uh, it's it's similar to our RFP and tender process where you have to achieve in your um, scores a minimum in order to move forward. Any thoughts on the applicant scoring and adjudication process? Great. Uh, so now uh, we get into the program streams. So I drafted a program that included a, an overarching grant program that had guiding principles and then it had some substreams. And one was a community services stream. And another one was the festival and grant. A festival and events partnership and a third one was the emerging needs and program innovation. And then we have the signage grant, which grant program, which really doesn't fit well with the overarching grant program, but should be uh, administered in a, a similar way, I guess, moving forward in order to um, to comply with all of the eligibility criteria. So the first substream was community services and for discussion uh, to ensure that the program description reflects the committee's suggested direction from several months ago now, uh, to invest in both established and emerging community programs that meet identified community needs, build capacity and support Elgin's, Elgin County's strategic plan to strengthen the responsiveness, effectiveness, and resilience of community service organizations. So within the specific handbook, we would have um, guidelines for community agencies who could apply and for what types of programs. So any thoughts about the community services stream? So this is where I, I was actually I, rethinking a little bit of the stream and came up with uh, almost more of a, a matrix where you have two types, um, two streams, one that I was calling the seed stream, if it's something that's brand new, or one that I would call the grow stream, if you're a, already an established organization but you're trying to do something new. And, um, and the reason it's a, it's a matrix is because if you got those two streams under, um, you would first specify if you are a community service organization, an event or festival type organization, or whether you are looking for signage. So, so it's not, so just a, a slightly different way of thinking of the four streams. Um, but I actually think it might be simpler. It may not come across that way, the way I'm trying to explain it. Um, but, um, and I, I shared uh, the matrix in advance um, just for, um, for information with, uh, with Julie and the chair. So happy to share that with the committee for your consideration. Um, the idea, behind it is because I, I think all along we've been talking about streams and I think this is doing a good job of you know what Julie is suggesting is doing a good job of, of getting us in that direction. What I'm concerned is that it's not addressing some of the issues we've had in terms of organizations um, being a little stagnant and perhaps taking the uh, the funding for granted. So, and trying to align with our strategic plan, where we are um, encouraging growing Elgin, the idea uh, would be that if you are a, an existing organization and if you uh, you've received funding in the past, you would be just oh, there it is. <laughs> 
like you. Um, you would be the criteria and you would be evaluated on um, whether you're trying to launch something new. Perhaps you, it's an existing service that you're trying to enhance. So you're growing it. You're either growing it in numbers or you're growing the number of services um, that you're trying to reach. You're trying to grow the number of people. And um, so I'm happy to clarify further. And just so you know, that's based on what uh, Trillium, it's completely, um, or at least partially borrowed from the Trillium Foundation, who's experienced the same kind of um, challenges that I think we've experienced in terms of trying to put time limits and should we um, stop funding some organizations if we don't see that they're becoming sustainable. And that, those things are hard to prove and also become arbitrary. So I think the real spirit that we're trying to accomplish is to make sure that these organizations are, are continuously growing in terms of rethinking, evolving, um, adjusting their services or their programming, even if you're a fair, like what are you doing? Uh, are you, do you have new features that will attract um, new families or younger families and, and so on? So I'm, I'm trying to, to make the, uh, the criteria easier and, um, and the last thing I'll say is because the, the attempt to ask organization to align with our strategic plan, in my experience, may not work. And um, because I think it, it will be very easy for any organization to find something in our strategic plan to say that they align with it. So I think it's better if we drive the strategic plan and say, this is our plan. We're, we have one of our pillar is growing Elgin. So in that spirit, demonstrate, you know, um, to what extent you're growing your organization. So that's, so I think everything else would stay the same, just a, a, a realignment uh, of the streams and the target audiences. So I would appreciate seeing that in writing. So I mean, I, I heard it all, but I think I would like to see that before we make decisions on it. If that's possible, Dominique, if you could send that out to the rest of the committee. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And like I said, I think it, it doesn't change any of the other items. Like I guess it may be with the exception of the, the timing, like there's one slide we said that might be modified, uh, but everything else that we discussed is still the same. I think this just um, uh, changes what we're looking for and uh, communicates what, and further communicates the spirit of that, of the grant program. Okay. So I will definitely circulate that with the permission of the chair. Absolutely. Okay, do you have anything else you wanted to add at this point, Dominique, or shall we carry on? Carry on. Okay, Julie. You're muted. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Councillor Jaguer, for your uh, valuable feedback. So I think um, just seeking direction from the committee in terms of next steps and timing. Um, so we had loosely, we thought we would work fairly aggressively and um, try to get something before County Council in July at the July 14th meeting, assuming we may only have one meeting in July and one in August. I think it's important to uh, try to seek Council's approval uh, in July, in case there are outstanding questions and revisions required by them, which would mean that this committee would have to meet um, pretty quickly in the, the coming, like next week, to review um, kind of a, a more polished version of the program. And perhaps again, um, following direction, we'd meet again before July 14th. Um, alternatively, we could take the month of July, slow this down, um, take a revised grant proposal program to County Council in August, and still achieve 
uh, the September intake period, which was proposed today. So I guess it just uh, depends on committee members' availability over the summer months, uh, whether you have an interest in trying to uh, continue the great momentum we've now uh, developed as of today. Just keep working on it, get it done, get it wrapped up, take it to council in July, or um, take our time and um, take it in August, still strive to achieve our fall deadlines. I think the question becomes uh, one for you, Julie, of what can you and your team accomplish between now and, and even August? Uh, if you think uh, that there's enough hours in the day to uh, get this pulled together for a meeting next week, uh, I'd be in favor of doing that. Uh, and it would get it, as you say, give council an opportunity to have that further feedback. Unless uh, this is just one of those things that you got to have the time to do it properly. And if so, I'd be okay with uh, taking it to county in August. But I still think we got to meet sometime in July to do this. For sure. Uh, so it is actually my preference to try to wrap this up as quickly as possible because uh, I think we did lose a bit of momentum and perhaps lost some of the um, the committee's intent because we waited too long between when we discussed a revamped grant program and when we actually brought one forward. So it is my preference to try to condense the timelines as much as possible and uh, certainly uh, your team would be happy to put this together, uh, seek feedback and bring back another revision um, in short order. So happy to work with you on an, on an aggressive timeline. Fair enough, thank you. So I guess uh, it would depend then, then on uh, people's availability. What's, did you say one week, Julie? You think you can have something for one next Tuesday? Mm -hmm. All right. What's the committee thinking? Can we do this uh, meet again next Tuesday afternoon, one o'clock? If staff can get it ready, I'll, I'll be certainly available. Okay. Jeff, I, already have, I have a meeting in the afternoon and um, uh, in the morning, but I, like I could certainly do it, say at nine o'clock in the morning or whatever. Uh, I don't have anything till 10, 15. If we think an hour would do it, if we don't, then for me, it would have to be a little later in the day if it was next Tuesday. Nine o'clock would actually be better for me too, uh, rather than, but it doesn't matter. I'll make myself available. Uh, what's your schedule like, Dominique and Heather? We can make Tuesday work. Tuesday's good, Wednesday's the stat, and then I'm off. It's <laughs> great. Right, what's so next Wednesday? <laughs> Be fireworks. No. So what else? <laughs> anyway. All right then. So can we set something up then for next Tuesday at uh nine o'clock? Does that work for people then? It's good. All right. Which takes care of item okay. five. Okay. Uh that finishes off with your presentation, of course, Julie. Yes. Okay. Can we backtrack a little bit? Uh, one of the questions was, uh, what are we gonna do with the remaining balance uh, from this year's grant program? Um, and, uh, you know, I believe you asked the question, Dominique. Um, kind of thinking, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'll seek the committee's advice on this. Would we retain it within the program until, I say, the end of the year, fiscal, and then turn what over is left back to the county general revenue? Does that sound fair? Or that's be the recommendation, of course, going to county. It sounds fair. I don't think anybody's going to be able to use it much, I'm afraid, no. but. I don't know if staff has heard of any of our organizations, or local organization or events that are trying to do something different. Like I know some of the fairs are, are moving content online and um, so I don't know if we should reach out to some of the applicants who have canceled their events and if they are looking to do something different or perhaps it's too late um, but it would be nice to support if somebody wants to try something new. 
suggest we reach out to the 4-H because they are doing virtual meetings. And I do know that they did waive their membership fee for participants, which is the bulk of their budget. Um, if there is additional money, if there is an additional intake, if the opportunity was submitted to them, I suspect that they would support, apply for additional funding. It's in my mind, I would support them because they are rural and they are proceeding with an electronic platform and they are still able to accomplish their goals, which is supporting the rural children with an activity program. And to me, if there's additional funding, we should give them the opportunity to apply. I would agree um, with that. Mr. Chairman, if I could just ask a question of Alan Smith. Alan was uh, the staff member who reached out to individual organizations. Alan, can you just comment uh, on whether or not you asked um, if organizations would be um, changing their programming? Uh, offering a different format at the time that you asked originally? Uh, I did, uh, if they were going to make changes to their program. And uh, as Heather mentioned, the 4-H, uh, they mentioned those changes. Um, but overall, uh, the feedback I received, they were not going to change. They were just going to not proceed with their event. So. Um, but there could be there could be some follow up on that, but um, it wasn't really mentioned by them that they would be making changes. So it was very rare. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, just one more point. Um, rather than reach out to organizations, what we could do is um, have organizations resubmit almost as though it was a second intake using the existing application process and scoring matrix that you used for the 2020 program. And um, that's a very fair way of, of assessing whether anyone has new or emerging needs for this year. I think you're muted. Uh, number of applicants I suspect are going to be few. Uh, I would anticipate you're going to get something from STEAM and probably 4-H. I don't know if any of the other fair boards would resubmit. Um, but I agree with what you're saying that whatever method you want to use, it's got to be as transparent as possible and give everyone uh, an opportunity to apply. Uh, if that's the way we're going to do it, then it does uh, imply a, a bit of a workload for staff coming up. Uh, I'm okay with going through the adjudication process again, but uh, if that's what the committee wants to do, I'll certainly uh, entertain that. But I think we'd better hear from all the committee members and see if uh, we put this to a motion. Or do we need even council's approval to redo this? That's uh, part of the process that I would need clarity on. I, I'm not in favor of this. I think we're opening a can of worms where we've asked people to put in their request, and uh, certainly in the past, we've had surpluses and we've never opened back up to, to, to take care of that surplus. Basically, you put in your first request and uh, you, you either get it or you don't, but we've never opened it in the past. And I think it's just, it's just gonna complicate things. So I would not Thank be you. in Thank you for that. And I would think that uh, you're absolutely correct, uh, Mr. Warden. We're still operating under the old rules. We're not operating under revised rules at this point. So there is no second intake. Um, would that be the consensus of the committee on that? To that point, if we're still operating under the old rules, then the funds roll back into this grant program for next year? No. No. Those, those funds, um, would have been returned back to the county coffers. So it was not, um, it wasn't clear in any of the pro policies. But each year you started with a new amount of money. So we clarified that. Um, so it doesn't get added to next year's. kind of gone silent out there so i assume we've kind of uh found a, a meeting point maybe not all in agreement but uh that's where we are 
Okay, um, so that um, just a little, well then we know what's gonna happen for this particular year, those funds are gonna be rolled back into general conference. That answers that question. Fair enough, okay, thank you. So I guess now we're down to the last part, which is uh, if there's nothing further, I would entertain the German motion uh, with notice that we're gonna meet next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So moved. I would vote. Sure. So moved by Dave, seconded by Sally, and I guess we need that uh, we need that uh, recorded vote. Warden Dave Menel. Yes. Councillor Dominique Shiger. Yes. Councillor Ed Ketchaba. Yes. Councillor Sally Martin. Yes. Heather Dirks. Yes. Five zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. So thank you all. I thought it was a very productive meeting today. I don't expect next week's to be quite as long, but uh, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. So thank you very much. Thanks for getting it going. I appreciate it. Julie, thank you. I'm, Julie, I'm trying to get into the uh, Karis Watson.